Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1220, Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Uh, this is our first video for lecture 41, for which we're going to talk about the ratio and the root test. Uh, the ratio test being the foremost important thing in this lecture, uh, 41. These are going to be our final convergence test that we're going to talk about for series. And in order to preference the ratio test, we're going to talk about this idea called absolute convergence. Suppose that we have a series, you take the sum of the sequence a sub n, we say that this series is absolutely convergent if its absolute sequence, or I should say if the absolute series uh, is convergent, okay? And so we had actually talked about the absolute sequence earlier when we talked about the alternating series test. So the absolute sequence is you take your sequence and you take absolute values of everything. The absolute series would then take the sum of the absolute sequence. So we say that a series is absolutely convergent if its absolute series is convergent. So hence why we call it absolutely convergent. Uh, now let's look at some examples of such, such a phenomenon, right? Consider the series where we take from n equals one to infinity the sum of negative one to the n minus one over n squared. Notice that this is an alternating P series. So we start off with one, then the second term is negative, then the third term is positive, and the fourth term is negative, and you'll alternate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So this is an alternating series. If we take absolute values of these terms, like we did here, well, then that negative one is just going to poof, it just disappears, and we're left with the sequence one over n squared. And if you add those terms together, the sum n equals one to infinity of the sequence one over n squared, then you'll get one plus one fourth plus one ninth plus one sixteenth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This will then be a P series, a P series where P equals two, which is thus convergent by the P test. So this shows us that the, the absolute series is convergent, which implies that the original series is absolutely convergent. One thing I should mention that if you have a positive series, that is every term in the series is positive, convergence and absolute convergence will be the exact same thing, right? You potentially could get uh, a series because it has some negative terms. Well, its absolute series would be something different and therefore the convergence might be, you know, a different question at hand, right? Uh, take for example, the alternating harmonic series, right? We've seen this one before when we talked about the alternating series test. This is an alternating series. Uh, it's alternating harmonic, so it goes one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth, et cetera, et cetera. If we take the absolute series right here, then we're going to get the harmonic series, which we know is divergent. So because this series, if you look at its absolute series, its absolute series is divergent. So this series is not, it's not absolutely convergent. But on the other hand, we did see that the alternating harmonic series by the alternating series test is convergent. So we see that in this series, it's convergent, but not absolutely convergent. So the two things are measuring slightly different things. Um, and so to describe this, if a series is convergent, it's convergent, but it's not absolutely convergent, then we say the series is conditionally convergent. It's sort of a play on words right there. Because absolute convergence doesn't actually mean like, it's guaranteed, brother. It, it just means that the series, of absolute, uh, the, the series of absolute values is convergent. Well, the opposite of being absolute is conditional. So a series is conditionally convergent if it's convergent, but not absolutely. 